Okay, so for question 10, we have a BJT amplifier using like the common emitter amplifier or emitter bypass. And we have some characteristics here that RS equals to 1K, R180K, R200K, K, R E equals to 1K, RC equals 1K, and the base current 20 microamperes, beta equals 100, and the early voltage as 200 volts. Uh, so for part A, we have to draw the small signal equivalent circuit of the above amplifier. So let's draw it, okay? So the small signal is what so for part A, okay? Remember that for the small signal, uh, the small signal circuit, we have to short circuit the DC voltages, right? So we short circuit that. And then our capacitors, they become a short circuit for like, high frequencies, right? So this one here, it's going to be directly connected to the ground, and then we short circuit the capital RE. So if we just uh, summarize everything that we've done, so it's the source voltage here, it's resistance, and we have R1, we have R2, and here we have the base terminal. Here we use the pi model, the hybrid pi model. And here remember that the emitter goes all the way down to the ground because this capacitor here again, it becomes a short circuit. And here we have our current source. We have the output resistance here, right? This is G, M, V, B, E. This is V, V, E. This is R, Pi, R, 2, R, 1, and R, S. Here we have the collector terminal. Then we have the collector resistance and the load. So that's pretty much it. This is the, the circuit. So let me just name it as VX, okay? So that's the circuit that we have. Now for part B, we have to compute the small signal parameters. So for the small signal parameters, we can calculate, uh, we can calculate IC as beta ID, and that's two milliamperes, right? Um, so from that, we can calculate GM, right, the transconductance. And remember that the transconductance is just IC divided by thermal voltage. So this gives us 0 0.08 ampere per volt. Now we can calculate R pi and remember that R pi is beta over GM. And in this case, it's 1,250 ohms or 1.25 kilo ohms. Uh, we can also calculate the output resistance R out. So that's equals to the early voltage, right? The magnitude of the early voltage divided by the collector current IC. So this gives us 60K. Oh. So those are the three parameters that we have to define for this uh, particular circuit. Now for part C, we have to derive the expressions uh, for the small, uh, we have to derive expressions actually for R in, R out, and the voltage gain AV, okay? So if you look at the circuit that we have here, the input resistance is the resistance seen from this terminal. So this corresponds to, so let me go down here. This corresponds to uh, R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R pi, right? Because it's grounded here. So R1, R2, and R pi, they are just in parallel. So the the input resistance, so let me call C, input resistance, it's equals to R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R, with R pi, right? And if we calculate that, we get something that's around 1.216 kilo ohms. Now, for the output resistance, 
it's the resistance seen from this terminal here when the when the current flowing through that current source is equals to zero right so it's an open terminal so if you look at this then we would have r out and rc in parallel so r out it's equals to r sorry rc in parallel with r out and if we calculate this we get something that it's 984 ohms okay now for the gain av we have to look at the we have to look at the, the circuit here to determine uh, what's the input voltage, right? And for the gain AV1, so the gain AV1, which is v, VI over VS, right? So VI over VS. So is this voltage here across the input impedance, right? This, this would be our VI or VBE equals to VI, right? So this would be our VI, which is the same as this terminal here. So if we look at it, we know that R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R pi, it's equals to the input and resistance. So we can say that AV1, which is equals to V I over Vs, it's going to be equals to the voltage Vs, right, times, because times the input resistance, which would be something that would be in parallel here, right, but then we just have to remove this, we replace all those resistance by that input resistance, so it's just like a voltage divider at the input, that's equals to Ri divided by Ri plus Rs, okay, and this gain here, if we calculate it, 0 0.5486, okay, both per volt. Now, the second gain, Av2, is just V out over Vi, or in our case, Vbe, right, and this gain here, it's going to be equals to minus gm because if we look at this circuit here we have r out rc and rl in parallel right so it's just like this current that's flowing here right minus gm because it's in the opposite direction as v out measuring here right so it's just minus gm times the parallel uh, minus gm times vbe in parallel with uh, times the parallel between r out rc and rl so this gives us v out in terms of vbe which is our input so just to make sure so our v out is equals to minus gm vbe which in our case is vi right times the parallel between r out rc and rl so if we isolate V out and V i here in this equation, we get A V two, which would be just minus G M times the parallel between R out, R C, and R L. And this gives us something that it's around minus thirty nine point sixty seven. Okay. So the overall voltage gain A V is going to be A V one times A V two which is the same as V out over Vs. And then if you multiply 39.67 by 0.5486, this gives us minus 21.76 volts per volt, okay? So basically the results here, they comprehend part D of the problem, okay? But that's basically the analysis for this question.